Globally, providing effective healthcare continues to be an ongoing challenge. In 2017, 10.9 million people in the USA were pushed below the poverty line because of out-of-pocket medical costs. This report revealed that 46% of Americans could not even cover a $400 emergency expense. They would have to cover it by selling something or by borrowing money. Even those Americans who have health insurance often find it difficult to pay the amount that is required before the insurance plan starts to pay. In this report it was found that half of all insurance policyholders in the USA face a deductible of at least $1,000. An amount of $1,000 is already too much for many Americans to have in their bank savings. In 2016, a survey by Go Banking Rates revealed that 34% of Americans have no money in the bank and 69% of Americans do not even have $1,000 in savings. There is no denying that medical bills are considered to be one of the main reasons of bankruptcies in the US. In England, half a million patients had to wait for more than 18 weeks to start planned treatment. In Canada, the study revealed that an estimated 731,000 Canadians had to borrow money to buy prescription drugs. They were also forced to give up their basic necessities. The Commonwealth Fund's 2016 International Health Policy Survey found out that one out of two Canadians had to wait for four or more weeks to see a specialist. India is the top supplier of doctors to the UK and the USA. Since India is the largest provider of generic drugs globally, it is also known as the pharmacy of the world. 25% of all medicines in the UK are sourced from India. 40% of generic drugs taken by Americans are made in India. And India's massive pharmaceutical industry is the source of more than 50% of global demand for various vaccines. With more than 500,000 foreign patients seeking treatment annually, India is an important medical tourism destination. This may all sound very optimistic, but has India done enough to provide its citizens with a robust healthcare system? No, not yet. The work is still in progress. The vast majority of India's population depends on the country's private healthcare sector, and in most cases, healthcare expenses are paid out of pocket by patients and their families. Out-of-pocket health expenses pushed 55 million Indians into poverty in 2011-12. A survey by NSSO found that 82% of the urban population and 86% of the rural population were not covered under any scheme of health expenditure support. However, it is important to point out that 75% of urban households and 68% of rural households in India were able to cover their hospitalization expenditure by their income and savings. The Indian government has been running a campaign that provides medicines at affordable prices. Many states in India are running their own state-specific healthcare initiatives, and recently the country has launched an ambitious nationwide scheme, which is said to be the world's biggest government health program. If implemented properly, this scheme could be a game-changer for the poor. In July 2018, India's Supreme Court said that the private hospitals in Delhi, which were allowed to buy land at the consensual rate, should provide free treatment to the poor as per the quota. Various religious and dharmic organizations in India are running hospitals too. Additionally, the not-for-profit and non-governmental organizations are playing an important role in India's healthcare sector. This is Salahuddin Sheikh. He runs a small shop. His wife provides tailoring services in the neighborhood. He has no medical insurance, but for the last 15 years, he has been receiving free dialysis therapy in Latour's Vivekananda Hospital. For Salahuddin and his family, Vivekananda Hospital is a lifesaver. Salahuddin's kind and hospitable family was very happy to interact with us. Their story encouraged us to take a short drive to the hospital where Salahuddin has been receiving the free treatment. We soon discovered that the hospital is run by a non-governmental organization. In India, 
not-for-profit organizations are spread in both urban and rural areas. Some of them are involved in providing healthcare services. Fortunately, we were able to convince the hospital authorities to allow us to film. This was the first time I had visited a hospital in India that provides free medical treatment. Free treatment was available to those who had a BPL card or those who were eligible under the state government's health insurance scheme. Encouraged by the Indian tradition of Seva and driven by a mission to provide healthcare service to the poor and deprived people, the hospital has been providing all diagnostic specialties and major treatments which also includes cardiac surgery and chemotherapy. The doctors who work in the Vivekananda Medical Foundation and Research Center are emotionally connected to the cause. This is Dr. Bridge Mohan Zanvar. He is a surgeon. Before he moved to Latour, he was working in a leading private hospital chain in Mumbai. For him, the attraction was the idea of giving back to the society which brought him to where he is today. He has absolutely no regrets. For him, there is nothing more satisfying than serving those who are at the bottom of the pyramid. In the cancer unit, around 150 patients are attended to or treated every day. According to the hospital authorities, 90% of their cancer patients are given free treatment. The hospital never denies treatment to anybody on financial grounds. The role of non-governmental organizations in India's healthcare sector is crucial. However, it is still not fully understood. A report prepared by the Public Health Foundation of India concluded that an in-depth and updated information about non-governmental organizations is required to involve them in development programs, as the national statistical authorities have also given a very limited focus to account for this sector in their estimates. If diseases can be prevented or detected early, public health goals can be reached faster. Traditional Indian practices like Ayurveda and Yoga strongly focus on mental and physical well-being, and they are deeply rooted in the concept of preventive healthcare. Ayurvedic medicines and treatments are extremely popular and are readily available in the country. The challenges are complex, and India's healthcare system is multi-layered. During my interaction with the locals, I discovered that many of them were not even aware of hospitals where free treatment or affordable medicines are available. In a country of more than 1.3 billion people, how easy is it to spread awareness about a newly introduced policy or a scheme? Providing top quality healthcare, and more importantly, encouraging citizens to practice a healthy lifestyle are mandatory duties for any government. Will India succeed in its mission? See you again.